Instead of delivering the mail, a postal employee in Eaton County is under investigation for hoarding it. Fox 47's Carla Byron has more details on this bizarre twist in a case of theft. A significant amount of stolen first class and standard mail was found inside this home. 42 year old Cheryl Everett, a U.S. Postal Service worker since 2015, is suspected of hoarding the mail from her Portland route as far back as July 2017. A lot of the mail was found wet and damaged, some even burned. It doesn't surprise me as far as that goes. There's all kinds of weird things happening right next door and you never even know it, you know. A relative found the mail and then contacted authorities after Everett moved out of the home. Jeff Arney, a spokesperson for the Inspector General's office, says there's no clear sign she kept the packages for monetary gain. Postal workers are under a lot of stress a lot of times too, so you know, any, any number of things can happen based on just stress, you know. Arnie says in other postal worker theft cases he's seen, workers will keep mail because they're overworked and overwhelmed with deliveries. But he doesn't want to speculate this is the reason why Everett did what she did. In a statement to News 10, he says the majority of personnel are dedicated to moving mail properly. And this type of alleged behavior is not tolerated. And that was Carla Byron reporting. Everett is on administrative leave right now until the investigation is complete. She did admit to handling the mail, but has not been arrested. The inspector general's office will send the completed case to the U.S. Attorney's Office to determine if Everett will be prosecuted. The man who went viral after throwing a hot cup of coffee in the face of a teen working the drive through because his french fries were taking too long is now behind bars. We'll let you know how police caught up with him. Plus, how horses help police track down a suspect on the run in Florida. But first. The president postpones the House Speaker's international trip one day after Nancy Pelosi suggested the White House postpone the State of the Union address. I'm Doug McKelvey with the latest on the border wall debate coming up. Sarah Swistak, Storm Shield Weather with Brett Connor. This is Fox 47 News at 10. Three Chicago police officers were acquitted today on charges they tried to cover up the 2014 shooting of teenager Laquan McDonald. Another officer has already been convicted in the shooting of the 17-year-old and will be sentenced soon. Dan Sheneman has the story. This indicates to the court that there was no intent to include false information. Three Chicago police officers found not guilty of trying to cover up the 2014 police shooting of Laquan McDonald. One of the three defendants, Joseph Walsh. Heartbreaking for my family, a year and a half. The judge saying the evidence did not indicate the three officers conspired to hide evidence that would have incriminated officer Jason Van Dyke, who was convicted of the shooting. She heard every word of the testimony in this trial, and she concluded, as we did a year before, that there never was a case here. The shooting was captured on video. Prosecutors said it showed Van Dyke firing 16 shots at McDonald. The video was a key piece of evidence in both trials. To say that these men are not guilty is to say that Jason Van Dyke is not guilty. Family and supporters of Laquan McDonald expressed outrage. We know that the Chicago police care more about protecting each other's lives than they care about the letter of the law. Jason Van Dyke, convicted of second degree murder and aggravated battery, will be sentenced Friday. A lawyer for the man accused in a shooting at an Alabama mall this past Thanksgiving says his client fired the gun in self-defense. Aaron Brown is accused of shooting an 18-year-old man multiple times at the Galleria Mall. The victim survived. Now, you may remember police shot someone else with a gun, E.J. Bradford, who ended up not being the shooter. Brown's lawyer says the alleged victim punched and slapped Brown before he shot back. He also says Brown has no remorse for the shooting. Well, I don't know if somebody hit me in the head and he's a boxer and he's knocked me you know, pretty much silly. I don't sort of, I don't have much remorse for him either. Today's hearing also brought up new information on Bradford's death. A witness says he saw Bradford brandishing his gun before the shooting. The judge has ordered Brown's case to be bound over to a grand jury. The man caught on tape throwing a cup of hot coffee at a McDonald's drive through worker has turned himself in. Joshua Knoll now faces a second degree assault charge. The 16-year-old drive through worker said Noel appeared agitated and upset about what he called a long wait for an order of french fries. 
She says he then threw the coffee at her, hitting her in the face. He could get up to three years in prison if convicted. A Florida man running from the law is now in custody, and police say they have a few horses to thank for his capture. Take a look at this infrared video. You can see the suspect running into a pasture to get away from the cops when he gets chased by three horses. Police were able to catch up to him. On top of charges for fleeing and eluding, the man was also wanted for a suspended license and violating probation. The border wall debate heats up. President Donald Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi writing personal letters to each other addressing the shutdown fallout. Fox News correspondent Doug McElway is in Washington with the latest on the shutdown stalemate. President Trump and Nancy Pelosi going tit for tat. Their stalemate over a border wall escalating in high profile personal letters. On White House letterhead, the president informing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi her seven day trip to Brussels, Egypt, and Afghanistan is now postponed, saying, quote, In light of the 800,000 great American workers not receiving pay, I'm sure you would agree that postponing this public relations event is totally appropriate. A bus outside the Capitol set to transport Pelosi and a congressional delegation to the airport caught on camera, initially scheduled to leave this afternoon. I'm just shocked she'd even think that she would leave the country. Why would you leave the country with government shut down and you're Speaker of the House? It is petty. It's small. It's vindictive. The president's decision coming one day after Pelosi sent a letter of her own to Mr. Trump suggesting he postpone the State of the Union address set for later this month, citing security concerns given the shutdown leaving the Department of Homeland Security and Secret Service unfunded. The House Speaker backing away from her assertions after Homeland Security Secretary Nielsen tweeted her department and Secret Service are, quote, fully prepared to support and secure the event. It isn't a question of are they professional enough? Why do we even take it there? The question is they should be paid. The nation's longest partial government shutdown extending into a 27th day. The president blaming Democrats during today's speech at the Pentagon. Just a question of time. While the trip using military aircraft is off, the president did say that Pelosi could still fly commercial, but preferred she remain in Washington to negotiate an end to the shutdown. In Washington, Doug McKelway, Fox News. Speaker Pelosi's office said in a statement that the purpose of the trip was for the delegation to meet with NATO commanders, military leaders, and key allies. They added that President Trump already traveled to Iraq during the shutdown.